Join us on the internet. I greet everyone with peace of Lord Jesus. And now we're going to open the word of the Lord at this moment to meditate on the book of Acts. Acts 16. Our reading. It's going to take place from verse 27. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts 16, 27 says the following. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison door open, su supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and, s and said, Sir, what must I do to, to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Can we read together the last verse? So they said, Believe on your Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, your presence can already be felt from the moment in which we arrived in your temple. Lord, your angels were already waiting for us. Lord, you're already preparing for us a table. And here we are, sitting and enjoying of the benefits of salvation, receive the guarantee the gratitude of our salvation and our, as we meditate on your word clarify our minds open up our understanding so that we understand the eternal things that's the plea that we say in the name of Jesus Amen Amen. the church may be seated and as we were praying for the service the Holy Spirit of God showed that the angels of the Lord were already waiting for us at the door to wait for us, to give us a gift, warming up our hearts and bringing to our hearts and to our ability to understand, preserving us inside of what is the genuine salvation in Christ Jesus. So, from the moment in which we entered here and from the moment in which we plead for the spirit of, of Jesus, which is represented in his blood shed on the cross of Calvary, you are already prepared to understand that salvation can only happen through Jesus, only in him. We have the sure direction that will lead us to eternity. Paul and Silas, they understood it very clearly. Each one of them in their own situation, each one inside of their own context, they had a meeting with the Lord Jesus, a meeting which completely changed the direction of their lives to the point that with the boldness, without measure, went out to the world that existed at that time to proclaim the salvation. And they did it with such property, with such joy, that it caused some a little bit of anger and discomfort of what was the religiousness of that time and those men then they hear a coup that there was a coup that brought them into prison and the Bible says after they have been beaten up and many actions were done against them they are now at midnight inside of that prison singing songs of praise and glorifying the God to whom they serve, whom they served, the God had sent His Son to save us. This is something that any opinion, something that makes no sense. How can a person that has just been beaten up and the beating at that time, there were the beatings that would produce blood and wounds. How can a person that 
shape, feeling pain, feeling sadness for, uh, humanly speaking, because they were in prison. They sing songs of praise to the Lord, and they are able to express songs of gratitude. This is something that can only be explained through the Holy Spirit of God. Through human logic, it is impossible for us to understand and think about another reason. Those men, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The wounds and the lumps on their bodies, they hurt less. Less than the joy that they felt. Because they thought that even if he died here tonight, we will be with the Lord in the glory. It is the assurance of the Christian is saved in Christ. It is the knowledge that your name is written in the book called the Book of Life. And they sang songs expressing their gratitude for a salvation that was undeserving. The gratitude with which we sang about tonight, the praise groups sang and, and played, and you who are sitting there, open up your lips and praise the Lord. And you praise the Lord because deep down inside you know that you are not deserving of this salvation but one day Jesus said to his father father to your hands I give my spirit you took possession of something that even though you didn't deserve you took possession of a blessing a salvation that goes way beyond any human effort and this for us is sufficient for heavens to open up and for the answers to come and for the operation of the, the Holy Spirit to be fulfilled and that's exactly the moment in which they were singing the songs to the Lord. And there was an earthquake. It shook the entire structure of the place. And did something very interesting. They opened the prisons of everyone. It was something that was supernatural. It was a great earthquake. And now all the prisons opened. Not only the ones of Paul and Silas, but all of the other prisoners as well. The prison guard, as we call in our country in Brazil, every good vigilant was sleeping at that time. And who doesn't wake up with an earthquake? And he woke up, and when he wakes up with that earthquake, he was, he was surprised to see that all the prisons were open. All the shackles were open as well. And at that time, the prison guard, it was, no, it was not like the prison guards today. And you come, punch your card, and you then go home after, after the day. No, they were responsible for each one of the prisoners that were taken care of. And if anything happened, it was very simple. Would they pay a tax on uh, the forum? No, they would pay with their own life. When they see that, uh, he's scared, and then he takes up his own sword. I'm going to get a shortcut. I'm going to summarize this story. I'm going to diminish my suffering. I'm going to take care of my own life much faster, much less shameful. I'm not going to have to be brought to the, to the judge, the magistrates. I'm not going to give, give that speech saying that I was not able to honor with my commitment and protect those men. And then he takes up his sword. And we take up the sword, Paul and Silas, representing the faithful church of the Lord, representing each one of us here, that one day had an experience with the Lord. And this experience causes us to proclaim and to sing, causes us to enter in a situation that the world thinks that we are in prison, but we are praising the Lord because the gratitude supersedes it. And it flows in our soul. And it comes out as music and praise and testimony comes out in an act in a business that if it is dealt with what is expressed in honesty this honesty comes from the Lord in our daily lives and as we deal as we uh, deal with other people everything is, is expressed and those men they represented a church that was saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb and the only thing that they understood and they stood very well was something that we also need to understand. It's very simple. It's salvation in Christ Jesus, which is 
our role is this, whatever we, we would be at school, at college, at work, on the street, on the roads, if you enter into a place, if you're a work, co work or a neighbor, your word needs to be this don't do any harm to yourself because we are all here. The church is still here. Did you understand? Did you notice? Still, the church is still here. The Holy Spirit has not raptured us yet. And we know that the time is very close, but there is still hope for the ones that want to take destroy their lives because of their frustrations and sadness. This man was filled with frustration. In a fraction of a second, that the, oh, everything went through his mind. What is going to happen to my, my wife, my children? What a shame, my situation. There's no solution for me. And that's what we thought before we had Jesus as our Savior. But one day, one, someone come to a, came to us and said, don't do any harm to you because we are all here. The church has not been raptured yet because there are many brothers and friends and co-workers, people that we relate to, that need to see in us Jesus. They need to see in us the, the brightness of Jesus. And then they will see by faith. Because that man, as soon as he heard that expression, don't do any harm to you because we are all here. He asks for light. Haven't we all also asked for light when we met with Jesus? We were all in the dark. And we were looking for a uh, way out, but we couldn't. We needed medication to sleep, medication to wake up, medication to worry because the, the head was foggy. And it seemed like, like it was normal. But now we ask for light. And the light was shown. Like the song that the children just sang. Let the lamp uh, shine. And there was someone that was able to provide light to us. And the church of the Lord is everywhere. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who could have thought that in that prison, at that night, there was going to be a service? My brethren, only in eternity. There was a service, there was a period of praise, there was an altar call, there was a message, and a man was saved. Saved, blessed be the name of the Lord. He asked for light, and he jumps in. Coming to the middle, there is a song from the tune also that says that coming to the middle of a people that know the way to salvation. He walks in and you, that represented that he wanted his salvation. And at that point, I thought that my, li my life was, everything was, was all right, but now nothing is all right. I was about to take care of my life or someone would be able to, was going to kill me because, because of my actions. This is a natural condemnation because without Jesus, we are all uh, going towards perdition. Because without accepting Jesus as our only sufficient Savior, that's the only destination of man. Death, eternal death. Death on this life, it's what least matters. But once we close our eyes here, whatever, when, where we were going to open our eyes, that's what matters. If we accept Jesus, great. We're going to open our, our eyes to see our Savior and to hear, Come, blessed of my Father, come and receive the inheritance being prepared by your Father. My brother, if you are listening to us tonight, there is hope for you. You who thought that everything was lost. You thought that, every, that, you, thought that you were free, but in fact you were imprisoned. Because that's what the prison guard thought. He thought that he was free. Was he free? Answer me. No. Because the life of those men, they were uh, over his shoulders and he needed to live there every day. In spite of thinking that he was free, in fact, he was a prisoner. And man without Jesus is a prisoner. My brethren, he asked a question that cannot be stop, uh, stopped. What is the lamb? What is salvation? What can I do to have salvation? What can I do to be saved? What can I do in order not to be killed here or, or later by the authorities? And the answer was the simplest of the universe. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And that night, that man became a Christian in Jesus. And he, even he gave assistance to Paul and Silas. The Bible says that he washed the wounds of Paul and Silas. 
took them home and at his home, they were all baptized for the honor and glory of the Lord. And you entered here, you came to hear about Jesus, about this light. In our days, we have lived and experienced teachings about, about the fishing net. And those men, they threw the fishing net. And with this fishing net came many fish. Blessed be the man of the Lord, because one day this fishing net of salvation rescued us. And this prison guard, he found the pearl of great worth. Because everything that, that had worth in his life before, they were exchanged for salvation in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's praise the name of the Lord with a song. And you in your heart, you say, Lord, I want light. I'm jumping in. I accept Jesus' arm as my Savior. May, may there be salvation for me and my household. Blessed be the Lord. Esta noite você pode estar na seguinte situação. You are entered here tonight. You may be in that situation. You may be thinking, but I'm not worthy. The prison guard he also so thought about this, and surely in those few seconds in which he saw the prisoners free, the situation, the earthquake, under earthquake things are broken up. He saw many much destruction. He may have thought, I don't deserve to leave because of the circumstances of the earthquake or because of the, the trial that he would probably go, had to face. And you may be thinking this, and this thought is, does not come from eternity. It doesn't come from God. 
In fact, we need to feel unworthy because when we feel unworthy, we come to the Lord, the ones who gives us dig dignity, the ones who make us alive, like the song that we just sang. It's a love that cannot be measured. It's a love that cannot be measured. That cannot be compared. But this love was all prepared and planned from eternity for you and me. So let's eliminate from this point forward this thought. Oh, but I'm so unworthy. I don't have any resource. But you don't have. No matter how much you do, you're not going to deserve. But if you look at the cross and recognize that Jesus is the Savior, salvation is yours. You are saved in Jesus. And everything that is precious, the great pearl, great worth, all the importance, all the resources, all the means that the Lord has provided to man to bring us closer to Him, they are yours, they are mine, they are at our disposal. That's what I said, that salvation is something that is extremely simple. See the expression of Paul and Silas to that man and to the ones who were around him. What do you need to be saved? There is no mysterious formula or very difficult. No. No, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You are in a household. Blessed be the Lord. Glória a Deus. Mother the church to stand up. The Lord also has shown, the Lord also has shown in a spiritual gift that there was a woman amongst us that had been delivered, but she carries with her the weight, the symbology, the responsibility of the situation in which she lived in the past. And it was like if you had been freed from a prison, but you bring the shackles, the chains, everything that was imprisoning you there, and you bring it with you like a, a memento. And the Lord is telling you tonight, my sister, from the moment my, my son died on the cross of Calvary, he paid a great price. The pearl is yours. The treasure is yours. Salvation is yours. Take possession. Let go of all these things that connect you emotionally or spiritually. And, and with your feelings to the weight of the past. Everything has been made new. The old things have already passed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Take possession of what the Lord is, is, doing, is, is speaking to you. And in the same way that the prisoner had said, take this Jesus home. Allow Jesus to save your entire household. Proclaim the salvation. Throw the net. Let go of all your personal values and acquire this great pearl of great worth, which is the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. I'm going to sing this song once again with joy or gratitude because it's salvation. We do, do not deserve, and now we have it. Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord for the salvation that delivered us. Open the doors, open up the way, because when we know Jesus, we see a light when we go through Him, through it, which is the door. Now we are delivered from sin in the world, and now we have our eternal life to enjoy it. Lord, we praise you, Lord, for the privilege that we have, Lord of have you as our Savior. We praise you, Lord, because one day, one day we had no direction, Lord. But you opened up our eyes to show you, show us, Lord, that you have worked tirelessly to bless us, Lord. We praise you because your return is coming, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You glorify. 
be on me, Lord, in your prophecy, Lord. Because we know, Lord, that this promise is given to us, Lord. Praise the Lord, because in spite of the trials, you have been with us, Lord. We praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let us receive our service and take us home in peace, covered by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to thank immensely the visit of the, the ones who honored us with your presence. You are very welcome. And come back soon, many times, to hear the word of God and to live the salvation. And you who watched us online, you are very welcome. And with us, you will always hear the voice of the Lord. I want to say, uh, wish everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. And we are here to assist everyone who may need. And we're after assistance, we have a meeting with Group B and a meeting with the youth, 8.40. Amen. Oh, well done.